Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a disassembly video for you on these little guys right here. This is the Artisan Cutlery series, um, and so is this. These are very different knives, though. This one's a frame lock. I'm sorry, this one's a frame lock. This one's a liner lock, but at the same time, they're also pretty substantially similar. So I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble both, but uh, and I'll combine these together into one video uh, because. Yeah, I'm going to do the review as one video. Might as well. But anyways, um, I'll start off with the frame lock. I imagine this will be pretty quick and straightforward. A lot of thread locker on this particular guy, um, but not the end of the world. And uh, go ahead and pop this up in the back here. Nice long screw. Presumably that's also doing the clip on the other side there. Let's go ahead and pop this guy open. And then I'm just going to kind of gently rock this scale back and forth here. Um, not quite there yet. Uh, I can use this little spudger tool from iFixit to try and work this guy loose a little bit. If you're curious, by the way, about this or any other tool I use in my disassemblies, go ahead and check out nickshabazz.com slash tools. You'll get a whole world of tooletude delivered to your door. Well, okay, you're going to have to pay for delivery. I just have... <laughs> a website with video link. Uh, anyways, I'm going to try and push the uh, push the pivot here through. In order to do that, I might actually have to disengage the lock. There's a lot of thread locker on here, a lot. And so that might be keeping it in there. But the reason I wanted to take the blade out is because, well, now there's no longer a blade. Right? I don't have to be worried about, um, you know, the blade cutting me or open or anything like that as I am trying to pop this last part loose. Just to do an idiot check here, this little back part here shouldn't matter, but I think what I have going on is some of the extra thread locker put in here is holding these two bits together. So I'm going to continue with my little spudger tool here and uh, just slowly kind of work on these a little bit. I can see this little gap is growing right there. Is it great? No. Is it the end of the world? No, not that either. And I'll come in from this side for a moment. There we go. Perfect. Yep. As we can see right here, that thread locker has spilled out of the screw and onto the surrounding. So it was locking the titanium to the, uh, to the backspacer itself. Well, I'm sorry, to the standoff itself. And what we see here is very straightforward construction. We do see steel uh, bearing races, which is actually kind of nice to see, right? You, you love to see it. Um, that, that, that's a beautiful thing. But aside from that, there's really not much going on here. There's no internal milling or uh, skeletonization or anything like that. Um, there is no internal cutout. There's no internal engraving. It's really just a freaking knife. Um, they've not really done uh, gone above and beyond in making this, but they've also not got any huge corners. One could argue that the lack of internal milling is problematic, but at the same time, the handles are very thin. So I can't say I, like, picked this up and was like, oh my god, that's heavy. I'm gonna use some rubbing alcohol here on a Q-tip to clean this up. Uh, we do see that they did break this little edge. Whoa there, providing a little bit of a detent ramp, and I realize I've been zoomed in for a bit. So I've just been going through, cleaning things off like this. I am going to take my uh, bearings here and run them in this fabric with the alcohol on them just to clean off any uh, residual gunction. And now we're actually pretty much ready to put them back together. Oh, I want to clean off the pivot here. Looks like the pivot got overheated. Honestly, what it looks like is like they ground down the pivot. Like they shortened the pivot mechanically, and so the very top part got overheated there. Shouldn't actually have an effect, and maybe that's just some kind of dirt or another, but either way, yeah, that sure does look like they just ground it off. Like on a belt grinder or something like that. Whatever. Let's go on ahead and figure out which side of this is non-free spinning. Oh, it isn't. It is a free spinning pivot. Whoops. Um... So in that case, I want to rebuild it from this side, if it doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and use some knife pivot lube here. Just drop that in place here and here. And a little bit here. And my pivot is falling through, but that's okay. I like how it is a D-shaped pivot. They just didn't bother 
to make a freaking D-shaped hole for the D-shaped pivot to go in to make it non-free spinning. People, what are you doing? I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of lubrication right here on the detent ball track so that when the knife deploys, it will be a little bit smoother in the process. Going ahead, drop this in place. Again, a little bit of lubrication. Kabam and kabam. Bazam. Okay, and I'm going to drop... Am I missing something? No, I'm not. So I'm going to drop everything back together here. I did need to engage the lock bar in order to get to that pivot, which really does feel a little short. Um, but I guess that's just the way they're rolling here. I am going to clean off the pivot a little bit. Uh, this is T8. So I'm going to take this little piece of fabric here with the pivot in it and just kind of turn the pivot inside of it to get some of the gunk off of, the, off of that. I'm also going to take a little bit of thread locker and put it on there. And then I'm going to tighten, tighten, tighten. Like a moon of Jupiter, I believe. Yeah, tighten's a moon of Jupiter, right? I feel like a jerk if it isn't either way. Uh, whatever. Let us go on ahead. <laughs> Little known Nick Chabaz fact, I once volunteered at a uh, local museum of natural history and science. Uh, when I was much younger, as a person waiting outside the planetarium ranting at people about planets. So, yeah, bit of a nerd. Bit of a nerd. We even had little uniforms. It was hilarious. I had a little space jerkin, which... Yeah. All righty. So uh, let's go on ahead. Is anything need to be done further here? No. Mike could loosen the pivot a touch. Don't think so. Centering's pretty much that on, but maybe a little bit looser. Oh, no, that was too loose. That introduced blade play. Tighten that up a little bit. There we go. And there we go. Okay, so that was easy. Round one done. Now, let's move on to number two here. I did enjoy that gig. Whoa there. Is that screw stripped? No, it's just terrible. It's like maybe a quarter of a millimeter of actual gription that you have against the screw there. Um... Let's see here. Can I press a little? Okay, and it was heavily, heavily thread-locked. Whoever's working this shift at the Artisan Factory is just living for the thread-locking at the moment. Yikes. Is this one not free-spinning? Oh, for fuck's sake, Artisan. Okay, I'm going to get this blade out of here and then try and lift off the G10. What we see here is under the G10 we have a liner. We see the liner is coated in thread locker because that's how they rolled. You can see me stabilizing the blade here with my fingers because everything else is allowed to move, but that shouldn't. And I'm just very gently here trying to lift this guy up off of the thread locker. I can also kind of get up under here a little bit. Ah. The other thing I can do is just try and remove the blade. Yeah, okay. Now that the blade's out of there, I can just stick with this however I see fit and just kind of get up in here and pop. Okay, so uh, again, we are badly over thread locked. Like, odd is in really? Really, guys? Um, that's not ideal. But aside from that, everything else looks pretty similar. The uh, blade, as near as I can tell... Uh, we do see a pretty substantial burr on the back here. Let me see if I can zoom in and show you that. Very substantial burr on the back there. Where they uh, ground off. Well, set the lock, basically, where they ground the lock. So I am going to go on ahead. Not that it matters a lot. But I am going to go on ahead and knock down that burr real quick. Using a uh, little ceramic stone here. This is uh, from Spydeco, actually. But use any kind of chopping stone. This just happens to be perfectly 
suited for it. And you can see here, I'm just sort of, oh, might as well do it on camera. The goal here is just to kind of break off that burr a little bit. There we go. And I'll hit the other side just to make sure. Yeah, okay, we're clear now. Does that actually affect anything in the action? No, there's a very good chance it does not. But at the same time, I'd rather uh, just knock it down there because there's a chance, if nothing else, that as I'm working on the knife, if there's that strong slicey burr there, that I could actually cut myself unintentionally on the knife, and I just generally try to avoid cutting myself wherever I can, you know? Can't always guarantee it, but, you know, I do my best. All right, so now I can do that. I'm going to use this little watch spring bar tool to get everything out of there. That's clean. Do I want to? Yes, I do. I'm going to go on ahead and use a Q-tip again here and get up inside this pivot because I'm seeing some gunction in there. Uh, there we go. Beautiful. That's removed. All right. We need to clean off the bearings. And I'm just putting the bearing in there and then kind of rubbing it back and forth, again, with some rubbing alcohol on this little cloth. Beautiful. Go ahead and clean off this part of the liner. And this part of the liner is already clean. And I'll clean off the pivot and then we are good to go and reassemble the knife. Okay, so uh, to start with, I'm gonna go ahead and drop in this little pivot here. And I'm gonna go on ahead and lubricate it while I'm thinking about it. Just putting it right around there. Next thing I'm gonna do is drop in the stop pin. That is a necessary thing. Next up, I will put in the bearing here. And I will rotate the bearing a little bit to uh, evenly distribute the uh, oil. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of oil onto the detent ball path here. That should make things run a little smoother. I am over lubricating this knife as always, but you know, hey, whatever. All right, uh, there is that. Let us go ahead and my forgetting a part. I am not. No, I am not. I am, however, gonna lubricate that right there. Beautiful, now I drop this in place. Oh, actually, hold on. I'm going to break the thread locker that has built up around the outside of this. I'll do it live on camera here. Come off it. There we go. Good Lord. Whoever put this together must be getting kickbacks from Loctite. This is wild. Just picturing a caulking gun full of this. <laughs> All righty. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure we replace the stop pin into the blade here. Beautiful. And I had to press the lock down for everything to snap into position here because, well, um, that's kind of the way it works, right? The lock needs to put tension against the blade. Next up, I'm going to realize that I've forgotten to reinstall the pivot ring and that I thus need to do all of that again. Whoops. Take that. Goes here. Maybe I can spear the bearing. I can. Do that. Hashtag not a brilliant man. Get a better gear reviewer. There were plenty of them out there. New ones every day. Surely one of them has to not be a raging idiot. I hope, I pray, for the sake of our species and our continued reliance on gear. All right, so we've put everything back together here. I'm going to go ahead and just start off by putting in the pivot. Put a little thread locker onto it and drop it in place with the pivot ring this time. Oof, my pivot collar, that is. Come on, get in there. 
go in the hole, even though it's a crappy little screw hole. You can see here that this, this screw has been chamfered. Yeah, let me zoom in here. This is a terrible screw. Because you see there's this little area down at the bottom of the screw that prevents the driver from going in too deep. And then they chamfer the top of it. So you have a little tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of uh, actual depth into the screw there. And so as a result, unless you have a very, very sharp Torx bit, uh, you are just not getting any damn place with that. I am holding the lock shut as I tighten that down. Beautiful. That is way over tight, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and put in this bad screw. I am going to go ahead and clean off the screw before I do this. Because anything I can do to avoid further stripping here is going to be a good thing. Again, these are terrible, terrible screws. Whoever the screw supplier for them is should be embarrassed. Maybe not embarrassed, but at the very least feel like a moment of deep and intense personal shame, which they then move on to and decide to do better. You know what else is embarrassing? Leaving your camera zoomed in as you're trying to make a video for YouTube. I feel a moment of intense personal embarrassment, which I will then try and move on from and learn. Okay, now where are we at? little tight. Uh, let's go ahead and loosen up the pivot here. No play. It's good. All right. Oh boy, is the back of that thing sharp. Holy crap. Okay. Um, but anyways, we have now disassembled and maintained both of these knives. We find that they are um, sort of un unsurprisingly constructed. Not necessarily exactly how I would like to see them done, but at the same time, especially in this guy, it's clear that the corners were cut and the screws could be a little bit better. But at the same time, they work. They're fine. They're better now. So I hope this has been interesting to you. Have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.